Can you hear me now? Excellent, excellent. So I was just um, saying I'm just back from Egypt and um, thrilled to be back and had a fantastic time. What an amazing journey awake it has been uh, to add to what we've been building in this community in, in the recent year um, in particular. Uh, things are going to amp up again, so just know that as courses are coming around, um, you might want to jump into something because the energy is truly, truly amazing. So hello to my Egypt travelers and hello to everyone uh, that wasn't on the trip. Actually, we're in deep consideration about returning either one year from now or two years from now. So you want to plug in with the office and let them know that you're interested if that is, uh, if that is calling you. It definitely will fill and I'm thrilled to be returning. You know, what happens when we visit the temples of Egypt is there is an alignment, a geometrical shape shifting that occurs. And a byproduct of that is we start to align with a greater and greater version of, of who we truly are. So all the practices that I'm doing inside of the energy codes are, uh, are always bringing us to that same shape shifting. And we have lots of things in store this coming year uh, for you to be able to implement and engage with these practices. Whether you get to go to Egypt with us or not, um, just know that I'm always doing everything that I can to bring those, those principles forward with everything that I do into, um, into all aspects of engagement. So, so hello community, and it's wonderful to be with you here for the short answer. Um, same, same, and everything's different. Um, is the title that we're plugging into in just a few moments. And first, I have just a couple of announcements to make for you, uh, just to bring you up to date with what is happening. Uh, there are a few things. One is very big. It's just right around the corner, and it is the Lineage Retreat. I will be going through a lot of ancient Lemuria and ancient Atlantis and ancient Egyptian principles and some many, many practices of engagement, of attuning and activating energies in these ways. So while that may sound super esoteric, uh, it is. And also it will be super scientific because I love to bridge those worlds and allow people to realize that we could demystify the mystery and actually step into a greater version of who we are if we allow ourselves to do so. So I'm here to guide you in doing that as well as understanding the angelic realm, the archangelic realm, understanding uh, principles of uh, Christed consciousness and Buddha consciousness and truly developing our own ability to raise our vibration. But we're also working not with just raising our vibration incrementally, but to stepping into a new version of who you are, which can happen instantaneously. And this is going to be a focus that I'm working with in the Lineage Retreat this year, differently than ever before. And so even if you've been to the retreat before, I assure you that you'll have a new experience this year as we unplug and engage in that. It's April 13. Um, 14, 15, and 16, four days coming right up in a couple of weeks, and it's an online stream. Um, we, are, we are doing it online this year because uh, many people from around the world wanted to plug in last year, and uh, so we want to bring that uh, around the world. So coming to you um, April 13th through, through the 16th, okay? Um, Definitely going to be infusing the energy of Egypt into it and much, much more uh, as well. They'll, they'll be putting together a Q&A call on April 4th. If you have questions, more questions about the, um, about the course, but you want to save the date now. So, uh, so in the event that you come into that Q&A call and, uh, and realize it's something you want to do, you want to have it free in your calendar, and the sooner the better that you save your spot with us. We also have um, the Body Awake Teacher Certification Program. Um, enrollment to the year-long uh, teacher certification is open right now and um, through, through May. So uh, what's happening there, it doesn't mean you have to become a yoga teacher, but you learn the depth of what yoga teachers know and understand. 
and a depth of, of, of a true programming that allows you to develop your own consciousness in a way that ancient India had in mind for us. So you have to remember that, that consciousness was born in Egypt. So it was the dawn of consciousness in ancient Egypt. And then it went across the ocean to Greece and became Greek, Greek mythology. And it went across the land to India and became Hinduism and the gods and goddesses that we reference there. And please understand that the gods and goddesses of Greek mythology, of ancient Egypt, and of ancient India are divine principles. They are speaking about the, the aspects of the oneness and how we can learn to work with those aspects through the stories of these gods and goddesses um, is one aspect of what I'm always covering. But what I also want you to get is that I'm also talking about it from an embodiment standpoint. So what was happening in the physiology, what can happen that you can begin to monitor and recognize and work with so that you're awakening those principles within your own system. A byproduct of that is that we heal. A byproduct of that is that we tap into our creative genius of our origins. And a byproduct of that is that we become the creator in our lives instead of just becoming a better responder to what everyone else around us or our uh, family dynamic or our, our cultural norms had created for us, that there is so much more in store for you. It's just a matter of learning how to turn on those aspects of you so that you can live from that place. So, so that's another way that you can tap into that. It's a year-long study, the Body Awake uh, Deep Training, and it allows you to truly understand and to work with how those principles apply to you. It's a, it's a course in self-discovery. So you might want to plug into that. Registration is still open. You can plug into the cohort, which is going through the whole program together. So you'll have, you'll have teammates that are working it out with you along the way. It's really a wonderful, wonderful program. We also have our next monthly healing transmission um, coming up. It's March 29 at 8.30 Eastern time. This is something that you do not have to have practice with meditation or anything uh, really regarding the coursework that I teach. You come, you receive, you rinse, you repeat, and we do it every month, okay? You receive energies that are qualifying, that are harmonizing, that are deeply integrative and healing. And we have... We have thousands of people, I don't even remember how many thousands of people we have from around the world that join us every month to, um, to embrace these healing energies. So healing transmission, um, the 29th, 830 uh, Eastern time. So bring some friends, tell them about it. I definitely guarantee you it will be infused with a lot of the energies from ancient Egypt and the points of origin of consciousness that are available to us through that study. So show up and receive, okay? Uh, we have date changes for the short answer and master class uh, in May. The May master class will be uh, Wednesday, May 24th. It's rescheduled from the 17th, so it's a week later, okay? Um, due to travel and another program that we are putting on, we had to just rearrange the calendar a little bit, so the next one will be May 24th. Um, uh, actually, there'll be one in April, and then uh, May 24th instead of May 17th. So just mark that so that you don't miss out. The short answer will be that same, uh, at that same timing. That's you. That's us right here. Okay. Lastly, let me mention the gold membership. You can join now and join us for the master class that's coming up. What I do in the master class is I take questions from you. It's an opportunity for you to ask your questions and see not only the answer to your question, but how those questions interrelate with other people's questions and how we actually are sitting in a giant answer. And that's all we have to do is to recognize that. But understanding how things weave together and what the relationships are between the various questions that people ask is an amazing way for you to begin to feel more masterful in this thing called life uh, relative to Mortar Institute and the energy codes and living awake and, and everything that we're doing here in the program, in all of the programming that we're providing. There is an answer inside of you that is really stems from learning to tap the master system inside of you. And it truly is following the master. But th here's the deal. You are the one who has access to that master consciousness, that master system of flow, the, the great knowing. Each one of us is made of that great knowing. And when we learn how to use our senses in a different way, we tap into that great knowing and can navigate our lives from that place. 
and a byproduct of that is that we're in touch with the ancients and we're in touch with the quantum future and we're recognizing that it's all the same thing as soon as we allow it to be. So the energy codes are about building circuits to do the things that I'm referring to right now. And I'm always uh, speaking to you about how to do that. And of course, the year-long Live Awake program is starting again in May. I'll be making announcements about that the very next time that we're together so that you can really understand that the foundation of everything that I teach is available to you in a year-long study program that is guided all the way through. And in the meantime, there are loads of things that we can also be doing to tap into that. The, the foremost of which I would say is the lineage retreat that is coming up in a couple of weeks. You'll, you'll be guided through our points of origin, how the plant was seeded with consciousness and how you can activate that consciousness within you. It's actually what we're supposed to be doing and learning how to do in the course of our lives. And I'm here to help you, uh, to guide you through that. So, um, so all that's coming up with Mortar Institute and I'm, I'm thrilled to always be bringing you uh, everything that we can think of to come in every doorway or window or down the chimney in whatever way is necessary to stir the soul, to stir you at that deep soulful level because the pain in your life is relative to living from the personality and the solution in your life is, is available to you by learning how to live as the soul. A deep study of that with everything that I do. So, uh, so no that it's right here for you in any sense. And so one aspect of that is right here in the short answer. And learning to live from the soul is what I'm referencing when I say same, same, and everything is different. So one of the things that happened for me, and I just mentioned this in, in one of the classes that I was teaching today, um, that, that there is a reality that is based in duality that we are all used to living in, which generates mm, quite a lot of pain. We're either in pain because we're in what we refer to as dealing with the negative, or we're in pain because we're in the positive, but we're worrying about when is the next negative gonna show up, and how long is this positive going to last, and, and is it real, and can I count on it, etc. And that's kind of the living hell that most of, uh, most of humanity is, is finding itself in. Because we're oriented and have, have reconciled and registered our sensory input from this frequency that is referenced as duality. And believe it or not, duality is a choice. It's a choice, right? It's like, oh my gosh. Duality is a choice? What? What are you talking about? We're here in the third dimension where duality exists. We have the light, we have the dark, we have the good, we have the bad. Um, you know, how can that be a choice? And, and as I was walking through one of the temples in Egypt just this last week, uh, something really magnificent happened. In one of the temples, and I'm going to have to stop and figure out which one it was. I'll have to look back through our itinerary. But there was a moment where the solar plexus and the heart of so many in, in the crowd, which was our people and some other people that were in the temple at the same time, I noticed that there was a ripple that was coming through um, our group in particular, only because that's who I was looking at, but I noticed that it was in the whole space that I was in that activated and kind of illuminated this solar plexus, which, <clears throat> which has an effect right on the heart space because the heart space is sitting on the solar plexus. And the solar plexus is what anchors our mind. Our mental body is anchored in the solar plexus, right? Where the ribs splay apart, where if I punched you, it would knock the wind out of you. That space right there where so many people feel anxiety and, and turmoil, uh, upset stomach, um, that, that dis-ease, the uneasiness of life really stems from there. And it stems from there because the mental body stems from there. And the mental body is the one that's deciding that this is good or this is bad or I'm not okay or, or just really assuming that I don't have a choice and that I have to deal with this thing that these other people are doing or this thing that these other people don't understand or this, this, re this reality that I'm living in that is filled with angst. And, 
and here's what here's what came right after I was witnessing this. It was like a boom, like a a a, a thunder and lightning sort of sort of in a silent sort of way went through the group, and there was a a, a huge moment of of realization. And the best way for me to describe it to you is that it was as if friend and foe were the same. Now, the night before I had had some image sort of thing happen, it wasn't a dream, but it was more lucid than, than sleep, but it wasn't driven by my conscious thoughts by any means. And it was literally the same thing. And then this next day in a temple, I see this thing ripple through our crowd. And, and it was the equivalent to your, your most reliable friendships that you're really attached to, that you're hooked in with, and your most challenged relationships were in a room together, and they were collaborating in a sort of way, like a way that your mind would never imagine these people and these people would never be collaborating. They would never be getting along, much less coming up with a way of working together in some project here in our earthly experience. At least we pretty much hope they don't because we're pretty much counting on these to help us deal with these. And and here was a new realm. It's like the curtains are pulled back, and all of a sudden you're sitting in another way of looking at things. And you weren't trying to, and it came out of nowhere, and it actually can be um, disarming or it can be um, disabling for a moment because our reality that we were counting on is now gone. Like, how could you talk to you, and how could you do that? And, and, it, and it would feel as if our allies and our enemies were equally unreliable. But what happens in that same moment is an attachment is removed. An attachment is set back, and we are set back here in a new perspective that recognizes bus stop, bus stop conversation. It's about the bus stop conversation and these allies and enemies and friends and foe and the liked and the unliked, um, they're working together. They're conspiring to support you into your unattaching to the world of duality. Yeah, okay? This is a big old short answer for you that I hope gets to tap you deeply for the rest of your life because your friends and your foe are secretly collaborating and conspiring to support you in unattaching from the land of duality, from the idea that you have no choice, that you have to contend with these challenges, that it is that it is hard and is going to be hard and it's going to take time and you're going to have to work through it and you're going to have to deal with it for you know months, years, decades even. This is the world that we live in. We think that way. And the fact is, my friends, it isn't true because the friends and the foe are same, same. They're both seated in this idea that duality exists and I have to run from the bad in order to live in the good, that I have to fight the bad in order to have the good. And that whole game, uh, it's, it's time is up. It's time is up for us. In a natural sort of way, humanity is being kind of pressed into what do I believe? I don't know. Should I believe in this? Should I believe in that? I hear this thing and I hear this thing. They're conflicting. What do I do? And in the last few years, more people have said, I'm just going to have to trust myself. I'm just going to have to go with it. I'm just going to have to go with what feels true to me. And I promise you that the moment that that is a reality that's coming up and out of you, the entire creation, the entire manifest realms are 
applauding. They're basically saying, whew, thought they'd never get it. That's what we want them to get. You're just going to have to trust you. You're just going to have to do that. Well, what I want to do inside of all the work that I'm sharing with you is teach you how to do that gracefully. Teach you how to orient and operate in such a way that you can trust yourself. That it's not a fearful uh, conclusion that you have come to. One that freaks you out because you don't have any idea how to do that. So friends and foe, uh, same, same. Allies and enemies, same, same. You know, and it's kind of a freaky thing to even think about. But I want you to understand this. They're both conspiring in your favor. Both of them are equally conspiring in your favor to assist you in finding you. So you bring yourself in onto subject, as I taught in the Energy Codes book. And if you haven't read the book, get the book. It's an easy way for you to start to get these principles down and start incorporating them and living them alive in your life. And you come on to those four anchor points, which are contracting the, the muscles in the base of the pelvic bowl, which anchors you deeply inside your own system. And you roll your shoulders up and back and down and squeeze your blades together and drop them down and roll your eyes up and then be the one behind the eyes and, and be in this alignment, in this elevator shaft that connects these areas together and start breathing up and down the central channel. It's all in the book. It's easy to do. It's on YouTube, um, you know, varieties as well. You can do this piece. It's a simple way to begin to recognize that there's a version of you that's living inside, deeper within than the version of you you've been living from. And that one has access to the master system of communication, the master system of, of knowingness, that, that realm of us that does live upon the answers instead of bouncing around upon the questions. And so when we begin to live from that place, we begin to access the opportunity, the capacity for recognizing that it isn't about what this one says or about what this one says. It isn't about what this one says I should do or about me getting away from what this one says I should do. It isn't about good and evil. It isn't about heaven and hell until uh, until we recognize that, we're in a great state of pain and a great state of fear that we're going to end up in the other one if we happen to be seated in a good place in this moment. So we want to be able to both and. We want to be able to move this into a different choice. Duality is a choice, and your choice is to lay it down and to learn to walk up into a higher vibrational realm where you know that you are supported constantly, that every single thing that is happening in your life is guiding you toward the great empowerment of you as creator. So friends and foe, uh, allies and enemies, same, same. And when we allow that to be true, everything is different. Everything is different. So I'm hoping that you're enjoying this. I'm hoping that it's a mind bender for you a little bit. Uh, just know that the more love you pour into the mix in the meantime, the sooner that statement will start to make sense to you and start to be applicable uh, tomorrow when you start grinding on that question of what should I do and how do I say this and what, do I, what am I going to, you know, how am I going to manage that situation? All of it starts to unfold with, hey, it's not about getting a better response to those people. It's about dropping the whole thing and just doing exactly what you would love to do, period. Not relative to anything. What would you love to be creating for yourself as a life experience? So I'm hoping that you're enjoying the short answers. I love to come and connect with you in little blips of time where we can really spark something that, that shifts you. And by doing so, I'm hoping that it also allows you to recognize that there's something here for you in the deeper coursework that you have access to anytime. You can jump in all along the year, uh, no matter what's happening. And uh, two weeks from now is a real opportunity for you to begin to learn about where you come from, what you're made of, and how you can begin to harness that. We'll be speaking more about those kinds of things in the master class at the bottom of the hour, just in about five minutes. So you still have time to click on that, register. We get you plugged right in, and you are with us in the Q&A sessions of the master class. So it's always a great honor to be with you and to share uh, these deep truths of life with you in all the ways that we can. 
So blessings to you all. I'll see you in just a few moments in the master class. For now, bye-bye, namaste, and blessings to you all.